is a big thank you for all of you subscribers out there. I've now reached 25 subscribers. I never thought I would make 25 subscribers. So I decided that I was going to come up with a big thank you video. And uh, I decided I was going to start off small. I had a couple of ideas for my 25th subscriber video. But if I were to give you the big kahuna, you probably wouldn't... How, how would I be able to top that? I could have given you like the Batman Forever Batcave as my uh, 25th review. Yeah, the Batman Forever Batcave. But like I said, that would have been the tops. So I decided to go with another rarity. This one is virtually absent in the collector's market right now. P possibly because of the critically movie fan panned Batman and Robin and the failure of the toy line. Here we have the Redbird vehicle. Whee! I guess it. Yeah, the Redbird. Robin's motorcycle from Batman and Robin. Even more rare to find than the Batmobile. The motorcycle itself was designed from a, uh, the movie prop was designed from a uh, prototype Honda with a uh, 50cc engine, I think, with uh, fiberglass and paper body. And it's not faithful to the uh, movie at all, and that's possibly because of the handlebars. The handlebars point up. There is no dash. Th this is nothing more than if Batman and Robin was animated. This is what this vehicle would look like. It's very nicely designed. It's sleek. It kind of has a uh, 1940s roadster look to it. It's got the V engine right there. It's blue and red which is a much more co better co color combination than the black and red that we saw in the movie. It's even got a little seat, even though he never sits in it, and I'll show you why. It comes with an exclusive Robin figure. Very, very, very nice. I think they should have used this as his design in the movie rather than the black and red. The blue and yellow seem to be much more appropriate for Robin. Black and red just made Robin seem a little bit more dark. And he's not supposed to be dark. He's supposed to be the, uh, the, the voice of Batman. To keep him from going over the edge. He's got a removable cape. It's cloth. Very short. And it just clips onto his back like so. And of course, the one thing that fans did love about the toy line was that even though it is a little bit, the designs of Robin are based off of his movie costume, at least there are no nipples on the bodysuit whatsoever. I'm guessing Kenner couldn't do it. Thank God they didn't. So the cape just clips on next like so. All right. Ooh, I'm distracted. This is going to cause a lot of laughs, but this is how Robin is supposed to go onto the motorcycle. Remember the uh, Bat Cycle from Kenner's Dark Knight Collection, or the Robo Cycle from Robocop, which was basically ripped off of it? This is how Robin is supposed to go onto his motorcycle. Ha 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 ha!
Now you see why there is no dashboard. And I'm guessing that little Robin insignia on the top of the bike. I guess that's a view screen so he can see himself driving. Oh, God. And the sad part is we actually got some really good driving vehicles from Kenner. Star Wars. They look like they were riding Saddleback, but still, they can at least sit down in these vehicles. In 1997, we were so advanced by them. Why is he driving his motorcycle like this? This is terrible. All right. Motorcycle, of course, it rolls. Oh yeah, also the wheels have Robin insignias on the tread. There's a little shield that comes out. It's supposed to be a guard that if you had two figures here, you could knock them over. I'll use a Batman's cape right here as an example. If it wants to stay up. Yeah. Ugh. And, much like in the movie, well, I, I think it's a design for the movie that was left off, that Robin, you know, when he's, him and Batman are chasing Mr. Freeze, if you can remember any of this, and they travel down the statue's hand, and they're about ready to leap off of it, Robin's talking how he can make the jump, and Batman says no, and disables his uh, control code, via control code, the engine of the Red Bird, well... I think what Robin was trying to say, he can make it because this lever here, you just slide it back and pow. This huge jet exhaust comes out. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. This vehicle is atrocious in all means necessary. I mean, it, it's, it's a very nice design. But the figure itself just makes it look so cheesy and corny when it's riding it. It doesn't even look like it should be a motorcycle. I mean, look how huge this thing is. The best way to display Robin and his motorcycle would be like this. Him in front of it. I'm sure people that have this at home have done it that already. Oh, there's also another thing. This little thing is a missile. So. Ow. Wow. Safety loss strike again, huh, folks? That barely went a couple of inches before it took down. Then look at it. It's not very aerodynamic either. And, uh, here it is. Batman and Robin Redbird. Once again, this is a big thank you, thank you, thank you to all the fans out there that have helped make me uh, 25 subscribers and counting. I hope to see many, many, many more of you. And until then, um, be looking for my uh, next review. I will be reviewing Bat Hammer. And soon after that, to round off the Batman and Robin deluxe vehicles, the Jet Blade. So until next time, sayonara.